St. Maurice, and the Theban Legion. A traveler on the highway that leads from Geneva to Rome will notice a small and a very old Swiss town called St. Maurice. This town was known in the Roman times as Aguana, an important communication center. It was there that a Coptic officer named Maurice and 6,600 of his fellow soldiers died for the sake of Christ at the hands of the impious emperor, Maximian. St. Maurice was born in the year 250 AD in Thebes, an ancient city in Egypt near the site of the Aswan Dam. He was brought up in the region of Thebes and became a soldier in the Roman army. He was gradually promoted until he became the leader of the Theban Legion formed of 6,600 soldiers. Under Maximian, who was an emperor of the Roman Empire, with Diocletian as his colleague, an uprising of the Gauls forced Maximian to march against them with an army of which one unit was the Theban Legion. This unit had been recruited from Upper Egypt and consisted entirely of Christians. They were good men and soldiers who even under arms did not forget to render to God the things of God and to Caesar the things of Caesar. Maurice is the commanding officer of Egyptian Christian soldiers known as the Theban Legion. Summoned from Egypt by Emperor Maximian, the Theban Legion marches to meet their foes, the Holy Lance at their standard. After the revolt was quelled, the Emperor Maximian issued an order that the whole army should offer sacrifices to the Roman gods for the success of their mission. The order included killing Christians, probably as a sacrifice to the Roman gods. Only the Theban legion dared to refuse to comply with the orders. The Roman emperor was the head of state, the head of the empire, but also um, a religious figure. For a Christian to pay homage to such a figure then would have been an act of renouncing one's religion. The Roman Empire at this time is undergoing a concerted effort to persecute Christianity. Emboldened or perhaps inspired by the spear of Christ, Maurice and his men refuse Maximian's order, proclaiming that despite their loyalty to Rome, they are Christians first. The legion withdrew itself in camp near Iguana and refused to take part in these rites. When the news came to him, Maximian repeatedly commanded them to obey his rules and orders, and upon their constant and unanimous refusal, he ordered that the legion should be punished by a military punishment known as decimation. Accordingly, every tenth man was put to death. Maximian threatened a second decimation unless the men obeyed the order given, but there was a great shout through the legion camp they all declared that they would never allow themselves to carry out such a sacrilegious order. The countryside soon flows with the blood of the Theban Legion, all going willingly to their deaths. Maurice, as the leader, was reminding the Christian men of their duty to be true to their faith, and in fact to consider uh, that those who had their names taken out were the lucky ones because of their martyrdom. With the spear of Christ by his side, Maurice continues to disobey the orders from Rome. When Maximian heard this news, he got angrier than ever. Like a savage beast, he ordered the second decimation to be carried out, intending that the remainder should be compelled to do what they had so far refused. Yet they still maintained their resolve. After the second decimation, Maximian warned the remainder of the Theban legion that it was of no use for them to trust in their number. For if they persisted in their disobedience, not a man among them would be able to escape death. Saint Maurice as captain of the legion fired up the hearts of the soldiers with fervor by his encouragement. Maurice, 
calling attention to the example of their faithful fellow soldiers, already martyrs, persuaded them all to be ready to die in their turn for the sake of their baptismal vow. At his words, a glorious eagerness for martyrdom burned in the hearts of those most blessed men. The Theban legion sent to Maximian a reply as loyal as it is brave. O Emperor, we are your soldiers, but we are before all else servants of God. We owe you military obedience. We owe him innocence. We received from you the pay for our labor. From him we received life. We cannot with you disavow God our Creator, our Lord, and your Creator as well, whether you wish it or not. If we are not constrained to offend him by such crimes, we will still obey you, as we have always done. If not, we will obey him rather than you. We have always fought for justice, for the respect and the life of innocent people. This has been for us the reward for our dangers. We have fought in faithfulness, but this faithfulness, how to preserve it for you if we refuse it to our God? We have firstly pledged our oath to God. Then we have pledged our oath to the emperor. Be aware that our second oath is illusory if we violate the first. You order us to persecute Christians. You do not need to seek any further. We are here. Here we are with weapons in our hands and we will not resist because we prefer to die rather than to kill. Perish innocent rather than live guilty. If you still pronounce new decrees against us, if you give new orders, if you bring new threats, fires, tortures, swords, we are ready to undergo all of them. Christians, we declare ourselves, we cannot persecute Christians. Maximian decimates the Theban legion two more times after which Maurice declares their adherence to the faith in a simple message. Maximian is unmoved, and no one is spared. He therefore decreed, in a final sentence, that they should be rounded up and the slaughter completed. The troops sent to execute this order came to the Blessed Legion and drew their swords upon these holy men, who, for the love of life, did not refuse to die. They were all slain with the sword. They never resisted in any way. Putting aside their weapons, they offered their necks to the executioners. Neither their numbers nor the strength of arms tempted them to uphold the justice of their cause by force. They kept just one thing in their minds. They were bearing their witness to him who was led to death without protest, and who, like a lamb, opened not his mouth, but that now they themselves, sheep in the Lord's flock, were to be massacred as if by ravaging wolves. For they despise things present in hope of things to come. So was slain that truly angelic legion of men who we trust now praise the Lord God of hosts together with the legion of angels in heaven forever. His prayers be with us all and glory be to our God forever. Amen.